Hey guys, I'm betting that whether you're in paramedic school or EMT school or a seasoned provider that you've run some sort of respiratory call in the recent past. This is because statistically speaking, respiratory complaints are the number one response for EMS providers. So in this video, we review each medication that EMS can give to the respiratory patient. So let's get started. This video really pertains to the asthma and COPD patients. I will make another review video for respiratory patients suffering from CHF or pulmonary edema, anaphylaxis, and lung infections like pneumonia at a later date. So we're going to start with the medications you would give to a patient with mild respiratory symptoms and work our way up to the heavy hitter medications. Starting off with oxygen. You're thinking, too simple, right? The first way to increase oxygenation is to increase the amount of oxygen available in the body. The air we breathe is around 21% oxygen. However, in an oxygen tank, there's 100% oxygen. EMS providers should be giving supplemental oxygen at the appropriate rate for your patient's needs to maintain an oxygen saturation above 93%. Notice I didn't say everyone gets a non-rebreather mask with 15 liters per minute blasting in their face. If you can maintain saturations above 93% with two liters nasal cannula, you freaking rock. If you have to step up to CPAP, a BVM, or even intubation to maintain these saturations, then that is what is appropriate for your patient at that specific time. Next, you may find in your physical assessment the presence of wheezing lung sounds. Wheezing is an indication of the narrowing or constriction of the bronchi and bronchioles within the lungs. If wheezing is present, then both EMT and paramedic should be administering albuterol to their patients. Albuterol is a beta adrenergic agonist, meaning it directly affects the beta receptors within the lungs and heart, causing an increase in heart rate and bronchodilation within the lungs. This dilation in the lungs helps to open those bronchi and bronchioles, allowing for easier airflow through the lungs, decreasing wheezing and work of breathing. Typical dosing is 2.5 milligrams in 3 mLs of normal saline given via a nebulizer. Sidebar guys, if you hear ronchi within the lungs, which is an indication for infection, mucus, or other junk within the lungs, but you don't hear wheezing, stop giving albuterol to these patients. I couldn't tell you how many medics I've seen do this and go, oh, this patient has possible lung infection or pneumonia and gives them albuterol when there's no wheezing present. If you guys are one of these paramedics, please stop attempting to harm your patients. Think about this. If they have junk or fluid or other crap, it's contained within one area of the lungs, which is then going to open the lung passageways everywhere and allow the junk, the crap, the fluid to move to other parts of the lungs increasing the damage to oxygenation. So please stop doing this and learn just to sit on your hands. Next, you may see many providers mix another medication in with albuterol. That medication is called ipratropium or atrovet and is an anticholinergic drug, meaning it acts against the parasympathetic nervous system by decreasing or blocking the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Within the lungs, this creates more bronchodilation, but also aids in drying inner lung secretions that could be found in COPD and status asthmatic patients. This is why Atrovent is given in tandem with albuterol. When combined, they form what many have dubbed the duo nib. Remember guys, you're giving this in the presence of lung wheezing. Typical dosing is 0.5 milligrams within 2.5 milliliters normal saline given also via a nebulizer. So far, we have covered meds that will help out within minutes of administration, but EMS also gives meds like dexamethasone and solumedrol, which are corticosteroids. Steroids help to decrease inner lung inflammation and swelling. However, they do not act very fast. Therapeutic onset for dexamethasone, also called decadron, is around 20 to 25 minutes and around 45 minutes for solumedrol. With these times in mind, many times if the patient is not super critical, I will actually administer Decadron orally and have the patient swallow it before I even place them on oxygen. This way it's working in their system while I'm doing all the other stuff like extricating from the home, 
placing him on the cardiac monitor and starting an IV to finally be able to give the steroid. By that point in time, I'm already in the ambulance and the Decadron has already hit its 20 minute onset time. Dosing for steroids can be vastly different depending on medical control in your area. But the dosing I've seen around here where I am is 10 milligrams for Decadron and 125 milligrams for Cyamedrol. Thus far, we have reviewed the meds that you would typically use for the serious and not so serious respiratory patients. There are two more medications we must review, but before we do, I wanna ask you guys to hit that like button. It's free and I know how much EMS providers like free stuff. Plus it will help this video be seen by more EMS providers like you guys out there on YouTube. For more serious patients, there are two medications that you need to consider. The first being epinephrine. Epi is a non-selective adrenergic agonist, meaning it stimulates your sympathetic nervous system into overdrive. In regards to the respiratory patient, epinephrine will act upon the beta-2 receptors and create bronchodilation within the lungs. You should consider administering epinephrine when your patient has absent or such diminished lung sounds that you cannot sufficiently hear air movement within the lungs. A typical dosing for epinephrine is 0.3 milligrams for an adult and 0.15 milligrams for a pediatric patient. These dosages correspond with those of the adult and pediatric epi auto pen injectors as you will give the dose via IM or intramuscular injection. The last medication you need to be considering for your more severe respiratory patients is magnesium sulfate. Mag sulfate is a naturally occurring mineral within your body. When given to your respiratory patients, especially those suffering with severe asthma symptoms, mag sulfate acts as a smooth muscle relaxer. It will relax and dilate all smooth muscle within the body. But we are mainly concerned with the bronchodilation that occurs within the lungs during this systemic relaxation of the body's smooth muscle tissue thus allowing more airflow into the lower airway passageways. Standard dosing of two grams of magnesium sulfate mixed within a 100 ml bag of normal saline and infused over 10 minutes is typical in the EMS setting. Now, if you arrive and upon initial exam, you find that your patient is serious enough for epinephrine, do not withhold it until later in the protocol structure. If your patient is severe enough for epinephrine, give that dose first then move on to albuterol, atrovent, steroids, and finish with the magnesium sulfate. Also, remember that in many service areas, some of these drugs could be available only through medical control options. So always please review your protocols before acting. Well guys, that's it for today's video. If you guys took notice and liked this new set design, then let me know in the comments below. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next video.